I'm gonna sneak in over here. Hello. <laughs> should we should we move the camera so it's yeah, more centered? It. Pep's gonna do a lot of talking. I'm starting to lose my voice. Those of you that think I interrupt him too much might be glad for this video. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. We we do our fair share of interrupting each other. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let you tell him what I'm doing. And I'll just get into it here. So we just have this dresser that we've got, and we've got so much stuff in the garage that we pretty much have to paint it inside. The garage is full because I'm building three huge displays right now, and I'm almost done, hopefully finish that today, and we can get back in the garage and spray some things and get this buffet painted. We've got another dresser we've picked up that has been sitting in the driveway for a day, so we gotta get some stuff painted. So Jamie is painting this in Sweet Pickens. The color is First Crush, and she mixed it up with her immersion blender. Let me show you what that looks like. Some drip of paint everywhere. Where is the immersion blender? Um, in the sink, because I used it. Okay. Might want to put a paper towel underneath it. So this is one part milk paint to one part warm water. And then I did just like a splash of extra bond. I did, it calls for two parts mixed up paint to one part extra bond, but I didn't put that much. Mine's probably like five parts paint to one part extra bond. Cause I don't mind if it chips a little bit, but I don't know what this is already painted with. It looks like possibly some latex. So I wanted to give my milk paint a standing chance. So I added some, some extra bond to it. Did you tell them it was warm water? Yeah, always warm water. And I let it sit for about 20 minutes before I painted with it. So that way it has time for the pigments to really mix up. It gets a little bit thicker. And you have a couple of hours from the time you mix it to the time the paint may start gelling. If it doesn't gel up after a few hours, then you can put it in the fridge. So try to only mix what you're gonna need. So this is an immersion blender. You can use a fork. A lot of people use a whisk. We've got the little whisk balls that you can use, those work great too. But oh, we were you, supposed to show them those. We'll do it next time. We'll, we'll show, we'll do a whole video with the whisk for the people who don't want an immersion blender. But this is it, it's just got these tiny little blades in here and it makes quick work of the milk paint powder and makes it real creamy, goes on real smooth. You don't get many chunks, if any. It's, it's almost like the difference between uh, making like hot chocolate with a spoon and a whisk, if you've ever done that. The spoon, you always have lumps. The whisk, you usually get. <laughs> On the first coat, milk paint has a tendency to drip because it is thinner. You can make it thicker, but I like to do a thin first coat. So come back and make sure you catch any drips. 37 South says they're in the same boat painting stuff in the house because there's too much stuff in the garage. Yeah, Jamie does have a cold. I had a bad cold last week. I'm on the mend. I still have a little bit of uh, the leftovers of it, but now she's got it and she's kind of in the middle of it. So, you know, we just, we might be sick till uh, winter's over. It seems to sometimes work like that. The kids go to school, they got the good immunities. They bring it home to us and we're like, oh man, what is this? And we get sick and laid up for a week at a time. <laughs> laid up. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, there is no laying down really. We still have to keep working. I did watch Harry Potter yesterday morning. <laughs> With Jack. With Jack. <laughs> so she's going to get this painted real quick. We're going to do a first coat on this. Usually with milk paint, because depending on how you mix it, it does tend to be a little thinner. If you let it sit longer, it'll thicken up. But since we just barely mixed it up about 10 minutes ago, it's still on the thin side. It's about 20 minutes now. Oh, it's been about 20. Still thin, but the first coat, you're gonna look at it and you'll be like, oh my goodness, all these brush strokes, look at that. Once you get the second coat on with milk paint, it's really smooth. A lot of your brush strokes are gonna go away. It's gonna start to show you where it's gonna chip and crackle. And it's, I mean, usually you can get away with two. If you want like super, super solid coverage, you might need to do three, but most colors will cover in two unless it's like uh, the flower sack white color. Well, the other thing too is that this um, powders, so when you're done painting it, you just go over it with fine sandpaper and it will get real smooth and get rid of a lot of your brush strokes. Coffee with my sunshine asks, does the paint smell strong? It smells like, it kind of smells like milk and uh, it's made with, what's the other thing, lime? 
Lie. Lie? Lie. Yeah. No, not lie. It's lie. Is, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, not sure what the ingredients are on It doesn't Alvin, smell but... like a traditional paint because it is all natural. Yeah. So it's not like stinky like oil. It just has natural smell to it. I don't know how to explain it, but... I was going soap. I was like, it's made with lye. Yeah, it's not made with lye. <laughs> oh, well. But it is definitely something you can paint inside. It's not going to choke you up. See. So Liz Coombs, you can get this paint All on natural. our website at jamierayvintage.com is where you can find it. And it's First Crush. The color, yeah, the color is First Crush. It's called Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. If you watch the replay of the video, I'll have time to put the links in the description and you can find it there too. If you can't find it on the website, I'll make sure to go back and put the link to this color. And the brush she's using is the Paint Pixie Inch and Three Quarters brush. You can get that at the same place. Well, and it, I do have the extra bond in it. So that's, that's the only thing. This is just first crush and extra bond. And just a little bit, I didn't use the full amount. If you use the full amount, you won't get any chipping. And I hope that it chips a little bit, we'll see. Liz Coombs, yes, it is water-based. You It comes in a powder and you actually mix it up with water. We have a whole playlist that, and that would show you how to like mix it up and stuff. All right, so the, the question Josie asked, can I ask you why you're painting with the drawers attached? Won't they stick? Nope. So if the drawer comes out over the face of the dresser here, like if it were to come out over here, we would pull the drawers and paint them. But because they're recessed in, what we do is we paint everything out here and then we'll pull them out before they're all the way dry or sometimes just get like a little putty knife and run it along if they, if they get a little stuck and it loosens them up real easy. And then we don't have to mess with, like, like especially on like an older dresser like this, most of the drawers will fit, fit pretty tightly. And a lot of times if you paint those edges or they've already been painted 10 times, if you get a dresser like this, it was already painted white by someone before us. And that just keeps us from having to sand the edges down as much and the drawers can slide smoothly. And we do sand the edges when we're done so there's not a lip or a ridge. Yeah. We just gently hand sand them and smooth it out. And also for painting on camera, it's much easier to paint with the drawers in. So I'm just smoothing this paint out before it starts to dry in long fluid strokes. Makes it look a little neater. So Vicki Townsend asks, will the sample size of Sweet Pickens make enough paint for an average size end table? Uh, for a small end table, a small chair or a small end table. Um, the darker the paint color, the further it's going to go. A dresser like this, you're going to need a pint. And if you had a quart of paint, then you could do two dressers this size. And like I said, colors with pigment, darker colors, are going to cover better than your whites. So, it's kind of a general, general rule of thumbs up. Could you grab that lip over there, and then I'm going to paint this side. Yep. And then you can probably take them. I'll finish painting this if you want to go show them our next project we're working on. We'll get this started. This is kind of a indicative of our day. We usually will start one project. More, I need a little more paint. And then while it's drying, then we do another one or I rotate the laundry or start dinner. <laughs> People always ask us how we do all the things. Or we run kids around. Yeah, while paint is drying as well, all the other things happen. Our son forgot his gym shorts, so we're gonna have to run those to the school. Does he need those before school gets out? I don't know, he might. He has I don't think so, back. I think they're for wrestling. So I'll get you. And he has the, his orthodontist appointment. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to show them once you get over to here. I'll show them because then that's a long time. <laughs> okay. Oh, what? You're going to show them this side? I will show. Yeah, we'll, we'll paint this side. We're okay. still getting questions. All right. So Chris Durauchi says that she covered a medium-sized coffee table with one sample of milk paint in Moody Blue. Yeah, Moody Blue is a much deeper, darker color and has amazing, amazing coverage. So that sounds about right. You probably used every last drop, I would assume, to paint that, but yeah, it does cover really well. And it also depends on how much of a perfectionist you are. I don't worry about full coverage because I'm gonna come back and distress it anyways, so, you know, that's just me. Well, and this, this had a pretty chippy, I mean, it's already got two other colors before we even got it. And it's got a pretty chippy paint job, so that's just going to be fun coming back through. Yeah, I try to work with my piece. Like, I would never take a, a piece of furniture like this that has lots of layers on it and already has imperfections and try to get a pristine finish. 
because that's just too difficult. So instead of that, I'm gonna work with the charm. And that's where I think milk paint really comes in handy because the piece already has a lot of natural charm. So the imperfections of milk paint will just make it look that much better. So Karen Roberts asked, what paint have you used on your walls? So this wall here. <laughs> well, is, this splatter. <laughs> yeah, we need to repaint it. We've been painting a lot over here the last few weeks. But this wall here um, is painted in bare marquee. All, actually, all the walls. We, we don't paint them with uh, chalk paint because it's just it's too much. Well, then you'd have to seal them. Yeah, and you'd have to seal them and things because it'd be real flat. But it's bare marquee and it's color matched to... Um, white swan unsealed yeah unsealed white swan and we're just slowly I'm actually thinking of hiring somebody to paint our hallways because we never get to it and it just looks awful we, we're slowly painting the whole house in this color and it's kind of nice because when I feel like it I go around and I can touch up the whole house with one type of paint as opposed to having different paint for every room yeah and our walls I mean with with three boys and moving furniture in and out, our walls get dinged from time to time. Yeah. So it's nice to just be able to come back and real quick just throw a roller on it and done. So if you're local to Utah and you have a good referral for a house painter, we need our hallways painted. We're never going to get to them because we only do things that we can video and nobody wants to watch us paint hallways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> painting, painting the hallways is great. I'm randomly over here hiding out answering questions. I'm just painting. Okay, I got the whole side done. All right, so Jamie's going to paint that other side. We're going to take a little field trip. I'll be over there in a second. Come over to the kitchen, and I'm going to start doing layout on the stamps. Let, give me just a sec. I'm going to adjust the camera here, guys. So hopefully you can see decent. All right, so we've got some IOD stamps. Oh. Sorry. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll let you, Jamie's been using stencils a lot. We've got some signs to show you too. That's what I just moved. Let's see, can you see me if I sit down here? Oh, need to raise it up a little. All right, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the, uh, the iron out. That was mostly to get these because they came folded up. They're the girly, are they pillow shams? Is that what they're called, Jamie? They're pillow cases. Girly pillow cases. They're 20 by 20, and we get these at Ikea. Do you remember how much they were? Like $3.99. So they're $3.99 for one or two? For one. So $3.99 for one of these 20 by 20 pillow shams. You can get a pillow form and put in there, or you can just stuff them with, uh, with uh, cotton or batting. This one here, we've got cod, cod, we've got cardboard <laughs> in there so that we're, we're using the ink. This is the, the IOD ink. We've got stone gray out. This is the decor ink. We're using that because it gives you more of a fine detail on fabrics and over paint. And you want so. to go juicy. And yeah, you wanna go pretty heavy with the ink. You don't wanna go light with that. You wanna make sure you've got a lot on your stamp. So first off, I've got the Reef Builder stamps here from IOD. You can find these on our website too at jamierayvintage.com. And we're going to be, so what, comment what reef you think I should use. We'll call this one, two, three, four, five, um, six. Like Size. Seven. I'm pretty sure that these are big enough. We can get most of these on I here. I would say that the that, right. wheat, that wheat one is a no go. It's too big. The wheat one's no go. So one, we'll just do these as an option. One, two, three, four. Which one do you think I should do? I'll wait for a sec to watch for comments. And you might want to test it. Out. I think four is the right size. Four, Jamie thinks four is the right size, but we'll lay it out before we get too far into it. She'll be over here in a sec to make sure I'm doing all the things right. <laughs> Sure, before you start stamp a pillow, you I don't think they can hear you very well, sweetie. Well, tell them they can always stamp a, a cardboard. Like, oh, Jamie's saying if you're not sure if it's going to fit on your pillow, you can always get like a piece of cardboard or wrapping paper or something and, and cut that to size for your, your pillow and then stamp that and see if that's going to fit. Lay it out first. 
we're wild, so we don't necessarily lay stuff out, you know. I like to, I like to, oh, everybody's saying four. Okay. They agree with me. See? Four, is, four is the one. All right. I mean, that's pretty unanimous. And like, I just looked and I see eight comments on four. <laughs> All right. So let me peel this off of here. I don't, we've seasoned it, but I don't know that we've peeled it off before. Seasoning is where you just take like a real fine sandpaper, like 220, 320 grit, real fine, and just real lightly go over your stamp so that it gives it kind of some tooth for ink to, uh, for ink to adhere to. So I'm looking at this and that's, I think, I think we'll be pretty good with that. I think I can get away with doing like four or so. I'll just do it up in the corner and we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to do that first before we get to doing it. And I've just got, when you get the IOD stamps, they come mounted on this flexible mount and there's two to protect it. And you can just use this other mount that they're not all on to stamp with. So I'm just gonna, if they're clean, they stick real well. And then we also got this mat. This is just like a plastic cutting mat from Ikea as well. I think they were like $3 for three of them. A $1.99 for two. $1.99 for two. <laughs> you could tell who does the shopping. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Um, but we use these with the brayer. I'm gonna put the ink out over this and then use it on the brayer and then put that on the stamp. You're supposed to let the ink sit for 24 hours before you heat set it. You just use an iron on the setting that is appropriate for your fabric with no steam. So this is the Iron Orchid Designs Decor Ink in Stone Gray. It comes in two ounces. Two ounces will go a long, long way. That is a lot of ink. I'm gonna bring this chair over. And we've got stamp pads on the way, right? We've got them ordered. Um, or are we in limbo on that? We have to sign up with a new wholesaler. Oh. IOD will have some. They'll have some, but they don't have them yet. Soon, so I'm just waiting for theirs. I would say in the next month, don't quote me, but in the next month, IOD will have them, Josie and Sally. All right, so look, look, at, look at this, Jamie. I've got, so I think if I run like right there around the, the edge. I think that it's not quite centered. Like you have more fabric over here. Well, I might have to do, it's, I think it's gonna be like a little big. A little big, so maybe go with the one just smaller. Um, so what do you think, hear me out. What do you think about not doing a wreath and just doing four in the corners? I think that's weird. Did your face make a weird face? She yeah. made a weird face, didn't she? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's weird. So All right. let's just go with this smaller Okay, so here. it's a little big for our, uh, this our thing. So we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to go with the number three option, guys. I'm sorry. That's gonna be the right size. Okay. Oh, Caitlin's on. Hey, Caitlin, can you drop a link to the Milk Paint collection in here so people can find um, First Crush and um, Bond, Extra Bond? So number three, that's going to be cool too. That'll be all right. Oh, yeah, Shari says that she's making pillows with drop claws. We actually are too. I purchased some ribbon. I don't know if I'm going to use the ribbon on my drop cloth pillows or if I'm going to use it on, I'm going to take uh, cloth napkins and make pillows and I might put the ribbon on there. I'll show you guys the ribbon. Hold on. All right. So hopefully my layout is good. You have a little bit more open time with the ink. It does not dry out as quickly as paint. When you get the DIY paint thin that we've been using on these, it, uh, it dries out fairly quick and you got to kind of hustle the ink does not dry out as fast. But you wanna go juicy with the ink because this fabric really soaks it up. So this is the ribbon. I'll bring it closer. Okay, I'm gonna start in a corner. Isn't that pretty? I used it on my wreath. If you guys follow me on Instagram, last night I made a fresh wreath for my door and this is the ribbon I used. So I'm thinking a pillow with um, drop cloth with a stripe of this across or, wait for it, 
All right, while she's making you wait for it, I think, honestly, I think this wreath is gonna be... Too big. No, I'm gonna go right here in the center. I'm committed now. Luckily, these are only $2.99 or $3.99 for the pillowcase. It's only $3.99. If it's I like, mess it up, $4 out the so door. So uh, what about doing a pillow in the polka dot with one of these striped across the top? Don't you think that'd be cute? Comment if you like that combo. All right. Good job. You shifted. Shh, don't talk about my shifting. <laughs> so when you lay your stamp down, you have to be really, um, let's see what, what they're commenting. Oh, they like the combo. All right, sweet, okay. I'm gonna make a couple of those pillows then. All right. So the buffet, if you guys watched last Saturday night, the buffet is probably next on the docket for getting painted. If you want to see us do like all the repairs and stuff and do like a full video on that, just comment and let us know. Because it, it does need a couple of things. Oop, I moved around right as I was laying it down. That's all right. Needs a couple of things, a little bit of work on a, on a drawer. The back, the, the bottom brace needs tightened up. So if you guys want to see that, if there's interest in that, we'll show the whole thing. Otherwise, we'll just paint it. Amy Mitchell asked about the red pillowcases. They're actually not pillowcases. They are cloth napkins and they're from Ikea. So you get two cloth napkins per package so you can make one complete pillow. Or if you wanted to like stretch it, you could do cloth napkin with drop cloth on the back because drop cloth's pretty inexpensive. But I'm probably just gonna do cloth napkins. I like it because I don't have to cut them out. I just make the pillow the size that the cloth napkin is <laughs> and I'll just take and sew the ribbon across it and then sew around the edges, stuff it. And then when I get to that little section that you usually have to hand stitch, I don't hand stitch it. You want to know my secret? Hot glue. I use Gorilla Hot Glue to do that little seam. It's neat, it's quick, and I promise you it holds up. You don't want to throw it in the dryer, but you can still wash them. We've had pillows that I have stamped with chalk paint on drop cloth and used hot glue on that little, you know, the little seam that's left over that you got to close up and they have held together. I've actually had the sewing, sorry Zeb's knocking the camera. I'm moving I've it. had the sewing fail on my pillows, but never the little part that I hot glue. So there's a little tip. I'll bring you in so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Melissa Tatum says she's going to Atlanta for Turkey Day and she has to go to Ikea for sure. My girlfriend's going to Ikea today and I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that they have uh, more of those little pine trees. Yeah, because we didn't. You saw them, and they were already. They already didn't have very many, didn't they? Yeah, I bought all that they had. Um, Talisha Reynolds says she just bought a sewing machine. And it's coming in the mail, so she can use some pillows. You know what? Pillows are really. If you have a booth space or you're doing a craft fair, pillows are a really inexpensive way to add product, one of a kind product, to your space. And if you can get cloth napkins for cheap, and then get a big box of stuffing get some drop cloths, some stamps. You really can fill up a booth fairly easy and people love unique pillows. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna be a little long, so I'm just gonna use like this end of my wreath here, just like that corner right there. Everybody says repairs too. Okay. So. Oh, somebody said to use this for a chair pad. Like oh, that you would could be put cool. a piece of foam in there and some ties on the back. Amy says her sewing skills are sad and minimal, so she'll go with the Ooh, napkins. Don't look at that, guys. I moved that all over before I got it right where I wanted it. You know what? My sewing skills aren't that great either. I don't ever use straight pins or anything, but I can sew pillows. No, it looks fine. Okay, you guys, can you see that? And that ink goes on there pretty well. You let it set for 24 hours, and then you take the iron. You would take another, like, dishcloth or something, put it over the top of this, and then iron and that'll heat set it and you should be able to wash it and do whatever you need to do. And I feel like I did an okay job getting that centered. I just started up at the top here and worked my way around. Well, pillows are pretty forgiving because they're stuffed. So if it's not perfect, at least center, it's pretty good as long as it's mostly. Delisha says she can't wait to get her stamps from us. Um, she's getting her first booth so she can be legit at a consignment store. All right, I'm gonna move you back a little more. 
Using milk paint over latex, can I sand lightly to remove shine instead of adding bond? Yes, you can sand, give it some grip. I always add just a little bit of bond just because it makes me feel better with latex, but absolutely. Show them. Okay. Show them your stencil. You're going to set up the next stamp. Yep, I'm, i got to get the All lettering right. set up. You guys may have already seen these if you follow me on social media, but I played a little bit last night before I went to my wreath class. Oops, look, I got milk paint on my eye, my eye watch. It's my life. All right, so this one, I used the buffalo plaid stencil. The trick with the buffalo plaid is you basically are almost dry brushing it on because there's so many lines and stripes and you can see it's not perfect. Can you guys see? Like you're never gonna get it perfect. I don't but... know, mine was pretty perfect on the stool, but I it took a long time on, or not on the stool, on the dresser. Well, it's, I mean, this is pretty good. And it's so much faster than when I used to do buffalo plaid and I taped it off. So here's this, and I used, the reindeer is from Essential Stencils, but the buffalo plaid is from our, our website. And I liked that, so I did this one. And then this is an essential stencil stencil the merry christmas though did not have the holly leaves this came from a bigger essential stencil and because these are actually just leftovers from shelves that zeb was building so he didn't cut these to size for me and there was some dead space so i wanted to fill it so i put a couple holly leaves so if you have a bunch of stencils you can totally combine them to make unique looks. So I you might want to, did you tell them that this stencil here, the, the Yeah, buffalo, this is from our website. Yeah. And the, the, the reindeer is from Essential Stencils. So I mixed them. Because I know a lot of people use our stencils, but also have Essential Stencils. So I'm just always looking for ways to show you how to mix them. And then, of course, the Sweet Little Nativity. Did a couple of those. I always like to do duplicates for the shop. Because... Uh, I'm gonna dirty a stencil, I might as well do it twice. This one's got red on it from the reindeer. Well, I gotta distress these still. This one I like, the Farm Fresh Christmas Trees. Uh, if you use the code Jamie Ray Vintage when you go to Essential Stencils, you can save 10%. And I thought, it, this I like this one. It actually comes in a three pack with one more saying. But I like to do the same designs because somebody will buy, you know, two to make a display because I think those would be really sweet together. All right, I'm going to bring you guys back down. And they still have to be framed. That'll happen tomorrow because Zeb's going to be working on shelving today. Oh, and here's the last one. Joy with a wreath. So be sure to go to Essential Stencils. Use code Jamie Ray Vintage to get their Christmas stencils and also visit jamie ray vintage for the plaid all right let's we're back to stamping we're back to stamping okay so jamie wants this to say all is calm and then we're going to do the other pillowcase that we have here to say all is bright so to do this i've just got the letters i'm going to have to repeat a couple of them so we're going to kind of just lay this out and i, I just want to make sure it fits that it'll be mostly centered it, if it's not quite centered and it's got that handmade look, that's all the better. All right, Happet Stands Furniture and Sundry says, what do you use for hanging them? I struggle with choosing those. So for my little pictures like that, when Zep frames them, he leaves a lip in the back and then it can just hang on nails on the lip. So he just hang, leaves a little ledge in the back. You could also do just like a little, they sell little hanging kits and you could add stuff on there. I'm just kind of eyeballing this, guys. If you were really, if you had more time and you weren't live on YouTube, you could take more time and lay this out. Okay, so somebody said, do you have to use the brayer? Is that better than an ink pad? I actually feel like an ink pad is better, but we don't have the ink pads in stock yet, so we're just using the tools that we have. And we also want to show you that if you've already got the brayer and a mat, you could use it for the ink as well. I feel like you will waste less ink if you have an ink pad because there's still some ink that's going to be left on this mat that we won't use. Whereas if you have an ink pad, you can do a ton of stamping with that. So, and you can pick up ink pads at your craft store too. Like if you order our ink and you want a pad and we don't have them in yet, you could definitely do, you just pick up an ink pad. They come, you can or maybe even order them on Amazon, just a dry ink pad. Sorry, this is taking me a minute. 
I'm trying to get it even with the square, but also center it in the wreath. <laughs> Zeb, you're doing so good. Zeb's good at eyeballing it. Sometimes. I actually did all of those signs last night by myself, and I didn't measure one of them. I just eyeballed them. Donna says it sounds like I have a really major cold. No, it's just to the point in the cold where I sound awful. I feel about the same as I've been feeling, maybe even a little better. I feel like when you start sounding like you feel awful, it's when you actually start feeling better. Oh, you know, we could show them too. When we're done with this, we could show them some of the signs me and my girlfriends made with the truck, Christmas truck stamp. Okay. All right, that's as good as we're getting. I'm going with that right there. Of course, I picked something that's like repeating. So I'm going to have to use the L again right here and then the AL down here, which is why I don't, I don't have enough you, well, letters. Well, you can use these to space it. Do you want to double check? I already check? did. Okay. Yep. We're already there. Dinah says day quilt orange. True story, Dinah. Is it Dina or Dinah? Oh, my M is a little high. Got to bring the M down. It's okay. Yeah, these... This show, 78, says the stamps are a game changer. They awfully are. We use them all the time. Once you have them, it's like you find new ways to use them. <laughs> and I just love them so much because the way they're designed is to look already distressed. They're made for decor. They're not like your generic stamps. They have some character to them, which really makes them pretty. Is that a capital A? No, it's all lowercase. I went with all lowercase on this. I probably could have mixed it up and finished my words off if I had done one word in caps, like the calm in caps or something, which you can do. I mean, when you're doing your own stamps, you know, go for it. Well, it comes with uppercase and lowercase, so. Yeah, the typeset comes with both and, and letter and numbers too. All right, so I think that's looking good. Oh, it's Dina, okay. Dina Harris. She answers to anything close. I get called Tammy a lot, so. Moment of silence, see how I did. I think my is is a little too wide, but you know, we're hand stamping. So this, Talisha asked if this is fabric from the fabric store. It's actually a pillow from Ikea. It's the girly pillow. Sorry, I know it's backwards. They're $3.99 each already sewn. So if you don't like to sew, <laughs> these are handy. Also, if you're teaching classes, these are great because you can get a lot of them fairly inexpensive. We're going off label here, freestyling. I did not oh. use the mount on the last L here and I should have because it's all wiggling around on me. Sally says it's not backwards today. It's not backwards today. Awesome, maybe it's because they're looking at it down. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it looks backwards to me when I see it on the screen. Either way, we'll take whatever we can get because they used to never be backwards and now they've always been backwards since like an update back in Except April. I think that's so cute. You're a good stamper. I'm going to make a shirt that says I'm a stamper. Should well, we make one? Yeah. You know, like I'm a scrapper, like scrapbooking. I'm going to just make one that says I'm a stamper. We can use... We can use the IOD stamps and then I'll take it into Photoshop. Caitlin, can... um, if you're on here still, Caitlin, did you um, get those new three quarter length shirts up on the website? I was going to tell people that we had new, I designed a few new shirts and sweatshirts, but I didn't know if you put them up on the website yet. I ordered mine. Okay, so I'm taking these other letters off just in case they still have some ink on them. And I'm just going to do the A and the L right here in the middle. So sometimes you gotta, you gotta use the letters and repeat them, but it, it's nice because you get this, this flexible mount is nice because you can lay it all out. Hi. <laughs> you getting your eyeball in there? <laughs> and you guys, I can stamp. Zeb's just better at doing it live. I'm not as uh, confident of a stamper. All right. Oh, that's cute. Good job. So there we are. If it's backwards, I'm sorry. If you can read it, great. Awesome. It says all is calm. We'll have a, I'll put some pictures of it 
We'll put somewhere. it on the couch and take pictures. Let me check this. We'll get some different. Instagram pics going. If you follow us at Jamie Ray Vintage on Instagram, you can see it there when they're all done. Yeah, this, we can come back to this. All and right. The, the other one's going to say all is bright, but they don't want to probably. Hey, you guys, oh, I could show them this. You guys, we're burning our new candles from the website. This is Apple Peel and Jack, I think. And this one is one of my yummy favorites. I'm going to slowly put this down. But if you need candles for gifts, all right, we're going back over. Watch out, there's furniture everywhere in the living room right now. All right, now we're back here. <laughs> if you need candles for gifts, they're made by Molly's husband, Clay. And if you don't know who Molly is, that's the shop I sell at. We sell them in the shop as well. So, all right, it's not completely dry, so I'm gonna have to be careful. You really wanna wait a couple hours in between coats, but for live television, that's what we're doing. Well, I don't know about a couple hours, your paint might set Well, up if then. you wait at least an hour in between coats, you're gonna get better coverage because you won't pull the paint back Yeah, off. so what's gonna happen because it's not all the way dry, if her brush gets dry while if she doesn't have it well loaded, it'll start to drag some of that paint underneath, which we're going chippy, so that'll be all right. Yeah, I'm not worried about it, but just for them, because if you're not used to it, it can get annoying and you might think you're doing something wrong. This is First Crush. It's one of my favorite pinks. Just a really soft, pretty pink. And dressers like this, painted in pink, sell very well for me because people love them for baby nurseries. Tammy Odell, the color we're using is the Iron Orchid Designs in stone gray. I don't know if you can read that. It may be backwards, but it's the stone gray color is what we use. It gives kind of a, almost like a distressed Metal. look because it's not super dark, but it's dark enough that it shows up real well on like light colors like that light white color there. Well, Can't I like talk, it because watch out. it's not harsh. Black is a little bit more harsh. Yeah. It's, it's very similar to like a gunmetal gray. So let's see. I had a question in here. Um, Jennifer, I'm... I don't know, we'll call you Jennifer S. I don't want to mess your name up because I probably will. Um, but anyway, Jennifer S asks, what would you charge for a pillow in your booth like that? Um, if it was stamped neatly, which that one's pretty good, I would say about $20, $25. Because the pillow, it depends on how expensive the form is. So probably 25 yeah. If it's just the pillowcase, then 20 But if you have to buy a form at Ikea, I think they're like 4 or $5, so make sure to add that into your price. And a lot of times people have their own forms, so you might want to offer, like, display the pillows in the forms and then offer them, but also offer them without them so people can make that Yeah, choice. if you're going to start doing a bunch of pillows. So if, we're, if you're just joining in, this is First Crush in Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. And we added just a little, we mixed it up one to one, one part water, one part milk paint, and then just a little bit of uh, extra bond, not a lot, just a little bit. Like Jamie likes to call it a splash, so not the recommended amount. Yeah, it's probably not going to chip, I don't think. Because we want, we want some chipping, but we don't want everything to chip off. And I, I have <laughs> no idea what this is painted with before I got it, so it's always a good idea. And like, I can still see around the edges some of the dark original paint coming through. And I personally don't worry about that. Like, I'm gonna let that set up and then I'm gonna sand it anyways. So I don't wanna have to worry about that. Okay, so this is what two coats looks like. You can see the coverage is pretty good on two coats. Like, I'm not gonna add any more to this. So here's a side dry, I could paint the side. The top's still pretty wet. The tops tend to take longer to dry because you usually wind up putting more paint on the top because it's just sitting there and it doesn't drip. Wait, Jacob, your, uh, your neighbors have pandas? I'm just looking at comments here. <laughs> yeah, pandas, like... Sometimes the chat goes off on its own and people start talking about stuff we're not even doing. It's great, I love it. Your neighbors have pandas, that's interesting. <laughs> Are, do you live in America or is that like... It's the... Jacob Vester. Oh, Jacob Vester. <laughs> Oh, let me bring you around over here so you can see the side. Jamie likes to put the paint on and then we smooth it out. So put lots of paint on and then catch your drips like you got a drip here, sweetie. Yeah, I'll come back. 
And then go back over and catch your drips and smooth everything out. And make your brush strokes nice and long after the paint's on there. I have to say it's pretty hard to mess up milk paint. The number one problem people have is mixing it. So they try to mix it and they don't mix it up well enough. An immersion blender solves that problem. And the other thing is if they, they can't get it to chip or it chips too much. So you kind of have to let milk paint do its thing. But as far as like the brush strokes go and painting, it's pretty hard to mess it up because it, it does sand very, very smooth. The nice thing about doing these lives earlier on Wednesday, we catch a lot of our friends from Europe. Oh yeah, they don't have to stay up all night to see us. I know that a lot of people do. <laughs> yeah, we, we get people watching us at like, I think it's about when we go live on Saturday nights, it's about three or 4 a.m. over there. <laughs> yeah, I had somebody ask me to go live earlier on Saturdays because they needed to go to bed. I was like, sorry, I go live when I can. Our lives happen when it's convenient for our work schedule and our life. Wednesdays are good because Wednesday nights, Zeb has um, youth group that he's in charge of and he goes to, and so this allows him to not have to edit a video. And also Jack's at preschool, so. So, Frazier Barrick asks, any floral molds? Um, I think there are some, but they are, oops, look at the wall. So you've got the rose, the, um, the builder, what's that one called? That's, that's not a mold, that's a stamp. Oh, molds, sorry. Um, yeah, I believe so. All the molds are on our website at jamierayvintage.com. And the only mold that, well, actually it's out of stock now. The chair mold has shipped. We will have more chair molds in December when the rest of the molds ship. But everything else is on pre-order. So if you want to for sure get one, check it out, order it. We'll ship it as soon as it comes in. So everyone's saying your bangs look great. And you're looking Thanks. very youthful today despite being sick. Uh, well, makeup <laughs> does that. I use, I use good makeup. Um, Evelyn Craig asks, when the paint dries, can you show me how it looks when you open the drawers? I always remove the drawers, but this looks so much easier. Oh, well. Yes and no. It's easy because we don't have to have it spread out everywhere. Every now and then, we probably won't be able to show you by the time it this dries dry and we're, we're done on the video. But what we do is we just take a putty knife and just run it along the edges and that'll get anywhere where the drawer won't come out and then it just pulls out pretty easy and we do like a light sand around the edges. That way nothing sticks. Well, also I'll take my brush and I'll smooth out the paint around the edges so that way it doesn't pull up. But milk paint is probably the worst in that it, it this stuff is rock solid. So you sometimes you gotta get a little aggressive to get them out. Sometimes we'll put two screwdrivers in and kind of shake it up and down and that's how we get them out. Yeah, very rarely do we have issues getting the drawers out. Like, uh, we, don't, we don't wait for days and days to pull them out. We'll have this finished by this afternoon. So once we're done painting here, we'll let it sit for a minute, it'll dry up. And then we'll just, we'll just, I mean, the paint's just right here on the lip. It's not way back in there. So just like a little putty knife, a thin putty knife, and you can just cut that right out if you have any issues. Usually I gotta get what a I can, cloth. I painted the wall. <laughs> usually what I do is I just stick a couple screwdrivers in here, bend them to the side and pull and it comes right out. I don't even have to use the putty knife nine times out of 10. All right, I'm going to wash the wall. Oh, Jamie got paint all on the wall. So she's going to wash the wall. We're Have close to the wall. Usually we pull it out a little ways from the wall, but we've got so much furniture in here back behind us over here because the buffet's in here too. Because uh, of my project in the garage, we don't have room to, to be able to do it. I was, I was going to show them real quickly before we leave these ones. You want to show them these? Oh, yeah. These are a few variations of the farm truck. So this is our farm truck stencil oh that God. we've got on our website. You guys saw me a little while ago do a chair or a, a stool. Um, I think that was last week I did a stool. These are just some signs Jamie's making with her, made with her friends. And this is hers kind of chalkboard style. Yeah, that one's just little black dress with white swan. And then this is another one here. That's gunmetal uh, gypsy and gypsy green. And white swan on the and back. And white swan. And then this one, my girlfriend used the fairy chalk mother gunmetal, but then she used faded burlap for the truck. And she used gypsy green and white swan. So just kind of some variation so you can see what you can do with... The stencil, the, really the key you guys with stenciling is you want a super, super dry stencil brush and the little C is the best. It's my favorite stencil brush. Did you get the wall? Yeah, it came off the wall. Oh, you got some down on the trim too. Oh. That, that, I'm looking at it closely. It all looks like it's gonna need a repaint. Yeah, here, so. it all needs to be repainted. It's pretty <laughs> bad. 
Oh, uh, I was gonna say something, I forgot. It's from when I was spraying and then the paint like splattered all over the wall. So this, um, this particular dresser, once it's dry, I will oh. sand it all, get it kind of chippy, and then I will take our knob topper stamp and I will stamp some knobs for it. Just some wood knobs? Yeah, let me, we can do that real quick before we go and then we'll be done. Do you have some painted? Um, yeah, we've got some in here. So, to answer your question, that's what I was getting back to. Someone, I think it was Stacy Black, was asking, what knobs are we going to do on this? We're going to stamp some <laughs> with the knob toppers. Are you ready over there? Do we need to come yeah, back over? So we've, got, we've got a knob right here. All right, close see. your eyes if you get, get motion sick. We're going back over to see Jamie. We might have to pick up some more. Hey, look, the inside of the cupboard is still mostly organized. Yeah, good for us. All right, let me... We're going to use the ink since we have that out. You're going to use ink because I've already got that out. And I like the way the ink looks on the knobs. Yeah, the ink gives you lots of detail on the knobs. The question is, where's the knob polish? Are you pulling out? Mm. All right, here's the flexi stamper. And if you have ordered these for us and they were not on back order when you ordered them, then they should be shipping Friday. We had a delay. We shipped all that we have. These, you know, everybody was so excited about all the IOD products. We thought we ordered enough, and the response was almost overwhelming. Like, we had to reorder, <laughs> and yeah. we're waiting on some things to come in. Yeah, but they're, they are coming, so you're waiting. They're they're showing the be whole shipping. thing. Okay, so here's the knob topper set. These are made, oh, there's like oh, six, oh, 63 different designs, and they will come out with a new set in the spring. Um, let's see. Let me find something I think will be sweet. I actually think this little sheep. The little sheep? I've been wanting to use it, and we tried with paint, and it's too detailed for paint, but with the ink, it'll be just perfect. So we're going to be using, let me show you the stamp we're using. Can you guys see the sheep right there underneath my hand? That's the one we're going to use. And we just painted these knobs with a white swan. We do have some prettier knobs coming from IOD, but these are just the inexpensive wood knobs. Not as well made as the ones we're gonna carry, but for now, this is what we're using because it's what we got. Because we are also, like everybody else, we are too excited to use these to wait. Yeah, so he's got the flexi stamper there. So I'm just, I'm just centering it up here so that we can get, so I can use the grid good. Here, you wanna move that out of the way? Yeah. Okay, same thing with the ink. You wanna get it. Juicy. Nice and loaded up. And then I'm going to put my finger up underneath here just to make sure I get ink on all the places on the stamp. Okay. You should have got enough ink? Yep. It'll be good. Okay. And you just press down through, give it a little wiggle. Uh, too much wiggle. Too much wiggle. Next. Here, wipe that off real quick. <laughs> the beauty See, of the... No wiggle, no wiggle then. No wiggle next time, no wiggle. I'll just repaint it. The beauty of it is if you do mess up, it takes like three seconds to repaint these. Yeah, I wiped it off. The paint was not um, sealed, so the whole paint just came off. I'll just repaint it. So don't wiggle, you just go straight down. No wiggling. There you go. Ta-da! See if I can get it to focus. But there's the sheet. And that's gonna be, that's gonna look cool on those with the white. Yep, that's gonna be awesome. So we just have seven more of those to go, but I gotta go buy some more, so. We're out, we're out of knobs. <clears throat> All right guys, we will show the finished dresser on Community. I'll post it on Instagram and Facebook, as well as pictures of both of those pillowcases on my couch so you can see what they look like finished. Tomorrow's video. What are we doing for tomorrow's video? We'll put it in. Um, what did I say? Oh, tomorrow we're making. We're not going to be live, but tomorrow's edited video will be some clay ornaments, and we're going to use the stamps to make impressions in the clay. So. It'll be fun. Yeah, and I'll have my tree up. So. Maybe we'll get Jack me. in on that one. Yeah, we'll do get, it after. Get the kids soon. going. All right, love you guys. Hope you have a great Wednesday. We'll have two more dresses, and, or dresses. I'm sick. 
we'll have two more <laughs> edited videos and then we'll be live again on Saturday at 8.30. Um, somebody asked where I got the dresser from. I picked it up at Facebook Marketplace and it was $40. Bye guys. See ya. Love you. Oh, bonus footage as I slowly walked to turn it off. <laughs>